Hey, what's up, shitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be quite a bit different because I'm going to be talking about YouTube. Nah, we're not going to have bikes, but you know, fear not. I do have a bike in the background. If you want to look at it, it's fine. I put it, that's my kitchen, by the way. I put it in there just because, you know, because I can. Do you guys have a bike in your kitchen? So I put a little light in the background because, you know, that's like all the YouTubers have to have like random lights in the background. I wanted to make a video to show you guys how much money YouTube channel will make, you know, in its first month of monetization. You know, I was really curious about these things before I got a monetized channel and I wanted to share what the experience has been like. If you thought about doing a YouTube channel, I hope by the end of this video, you'll, uh, you'll go ahead and break the ice and start making your own videos because I thoroughly love YouTube. And guys, I will give you actual screenshots and number figures. In order to be eligible for monetization, you need to meet a couple prerequisites. The first thing you need to have is 1,000 subscribers and a total of 4,000 watch hours within a last 12 month period. I was like around two to 300 subscribers for a long time. I did an e-bike review of my Wired Cruiser and that got a lot of attention and that significantly started bringing more viewers to the channel and then since then i've been an e-bike channel about january 12th i believe i hit a thousand subscribers you have to fill out this paperwork with youtube and adsense and then you become your videos become eligible for monetization which is you can put ads on your videos and you get a share of your views based on how many members have youtube premium i think if you're getting into youtube for money as your primary reason you're doing it all wrong i mean we're kind of living in a, a golden age of i don't know what you'd even call it broadcast because the whole industry is changing now youtube has brought to light so many i mean look at all these genres that was never even a thing 10 15 years ago unboxing i mean there's a whole who would have ever guessed 20 years ago that people want to watch kids unbox toys and merchandise and talk about it there's a uh, you know live streamers with video games there's a, a, every single genre you can think of like project farm if you guys are familiar with project farm this guy's out in his garage and he's doing different tests of motor oils and testing what putting vegetable oil in your your lawnmower will do to the engine it's just you can just tell that that guy loves doing that type of stuff and now he can make videos out of it and he makes a living doing that. And I think that's, to me, that is just awesome. You know, you have guys that are doing guitar lessons. You can do photography. If you're into flying drones, you can literally make a channel about anything. And what I like about YouTube is it's a meritocracy. You can put as much as you put into it is what you can get out of it. You can make a full length Hollywood quality movie and upload it to YouTube if you want to. There's nothing stopping you. There, you can also make a video like this where I'm just talking to a camera and I'll put some screenshots on the screen. You are only limited by your imagination. And guys, I'm 44 right now. As you get older, you kind of just get stuck in your nine to five or your work and you kind of lose your creative outlet. At least I think a lot of people do. And for me, YouTube has like helped me re-engage my creative part of my brain that's been dormant for a long time. You know, even before my e-bike videos started to get views, I would make random silly videos. No, 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 no. <laughs> that didn't end well at all, did it? Some cooking tutorials. This is the steak we're gonna be cooking today. As you can see here, this steak costs $99 for one pound. I actually had to Google whether $100 a pound is expensive because I have so much money I don't even know anymore. And I guess it is. I guess a lot of people can't afford to eat like this. So, so I made, you know, local fake news broadcast. What I find most funny about this clip, why don't you just give the guy, throw the guy a bone here and tell him to like, you know, make it look like you're doing something. Look at him. He's just sitting there perfectly still. City His manager, fingers aren't moving. Johnson. He's staring at the screen and it was like, it was so cool that people were watching them and they were enjoying them. And it was like, I'd have random friends text me that don't, you know, that moved away years ago and they're like, oh, I saw your video. And it's just such a cool feeling. You know, I've, I have a lot of funny friends. We used to sit around and joke about things and have all these ideas and like YouTube is free and it gives you a platform to do all of that. I think it's so cool. Like sometimes I'll watch videos. There's a channel called Froggy Flip. The guy goes to, to garage sales and swap meets and he buys 
uh, vintage toys and action figures and he resells them. And it's like, he gets videos, get tons of views. I think it's just so cool. And it's like the entire industry is, is switching gears. You know, it's no longer about the large networks. People, audiences are craving a more raw, real direct connection with the content creator or whatever you want to call it, you know? When I was growing up, it was all network shows that were highly produced and scripted. And now uh, there's this such a wide variety of content to choose from. If you look at the, the way news is now, like the big networks, now pe more people are getting their news from YouTube shows. The, the whole power dynamic is shifting. They're going to look back in history as this is a huge turning point and the way people consume content. You can do something completely different. You have the 100% freedom to do things the way you want to. And I highly encourage anybody that if you have a hobby, if you're into photography, if you're into flying drones, if you're into you know, fixing cars, you can literally start making videos, put them out there and you might find there's an audience for it. And it's a, it's just so cool to me. Filming videos is completely unnatural when you first start doing it. And, it, and it's, uh, it's quite embarrassing to, you know, upload a video of yourself doing whatever, because you're really just putting yourself out there for everyone to judge or make fun of, or, you know, you're putting yourself out there. So it's kind of a scary thing to do at first. It's been a huge, like growth experiment for me. And, uh, I like it because it also gives you areas to focus on so like shooting a video isn't just clicking the you know record on the camera and you're done there's the audio portion there's lighting i mean look i have i have lights here you can't even see this stuff so if you're into the technical aspect of things it's great if you like cameras it gives you a reason to use your cameras you're not just buying a camera and you actually have a purpose for it hey guys and i can write some of this stuff off now i mean how cool is that right i've learned a lot about cameras and I try and improve different skill sets each time I make a video. Sound is a very difficult thing to get right. Editing, so I use DaVinci Resolve, and you can literally do anything your imagination can dream up of. It is super in-depth, and guess where you can learn all about it at? For free. That's right, on YouTube. When you start doing things, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. and. Okay. Most cell phone cameras take good enough video that if you wanted to start filming a, a channel on your cell phone, you can do that. So I highly encourage anybody, just start making, you know, if you're interested, if you even have the slight bug about YouTube, just you can start making videos. If there's going to be a learning curve, but it's like, you know, you just keep doing it and you get better. And it's, to me, it's just a, it's a great outlet for your mind, a hobby, you learn, you grow. There's a community. There's like regular people I see in my comment section now. And I, I like interacting with an audience. You know, it's so weird to me. Been a bizarre experience. It's a bit scary. Companies are sending me products to review. And uh, I don't want to, you know, alarm anyone. But look, I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, there's no, there's no manual here. I mean, you just start doing it and uh, learn along the way. So I, honestly, I think if you're getting into it with money as your goal, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And I, I thoroughly believe, and I'm saying this guys right now with 1,443 subscribers, do it because you want to do it and you feel like you have something to share or something you want to add. And if you enjoy what you're doing, you will find the audience will find you and it'll, it'll happen organically. You don't have to make yourself the next Logan Paul or Jake Paul and, you know, force things. I think if you're doing something and you're authentic about it and uh, you have something to offer, people will pick up on that and naturally want to be part of it. I have family members I haven't seen in years and you know, I'm not gonna be around forever. These videos are probably gonna be around longer than I am. And I think it's also great because you know, my family members are people that you don't know are extended family. They can watch the videos if they haven't seen you. So it's like, you know, people get to see you more than they would if you if you're not on the internet, I don't know. That's a weird little aspect I think about. I think it's just kind of, you know, it's like a legacy. You can, people, if they, they miss you, they can put on one of your videos. But anyways, guys, now for the main event here. The way YouTube breaks it up is they show you your numbers for the last 28 days. In my first 28 days of being a monetized YouTube channel, I get an estimated revenue of $97.64. You know, that's not bad, guys. Uh, you know, figuring I've probably spent 
you know, eight to ten thousand dollars on equipment for the channel. My first payment from YouTube, guys, and I don't look, I don't want you to be jealous, you know, because hey, clearly I'm the I got the whole package, right? But my first payment from YouTube will be a grand total of two hundred and forty two dollars and seventeen cents. That's right, guys. So I've uh, pretty much accumulated generational wealth. And uh, yeah, looks like I don't have to work anymore. So as you can see, uh, I won't be quitting my job anytime soon. But it is pretty cool that uh, you can have a hobby that generates money. And that hobby that it gives you a creative outlet. I don't know, guys. I guess to put it in layman's terms, I just really love YouTube. But guys, thanks for watching. You know, I know this video won't be interesting for everyone. But uh, I'm maybe someone out there will find it interesting. And hey. They don't all have to be winners, right? Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.